Mr. Postmaster, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'd like to tell you about one of my greatest interests. Throughout the world there are many art forms. We can look at music, literature, painting, the list goes on. Each of those art forms are compelling to those who are interested. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is an art form which was developed by the Gracie family in the early 20th century. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has taught me lessons that cannot be read in a textbook because it must be experienced to be understood. But today I'd like to educate the audience a little on this great sport. The foundation of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu started in Japan by Mitsui Maeda, who was a judo expert. In 1904, Mitsui Maeda left Japan to go on an international journey where he would provide demonstrations to various countries on the judo art form. In 1914, he arrived in Brazil. Funnily enough, Mitsui was to do uh, circus demonstrations uh, throughout Brazil. At one of these circus, <laughs> at one of these circus, circus demonstrations, Carlos Gracie was in the audience. He decided he wanted to learn judo, and Maida accepted Carlos as a student. Carlos, after learning the art forms for several years, then decided to pass on his knowledge to his brothers. The youngest of those brothers was Helio Gracie. Helio Gracie was the, one of the more frail uh, and not too well health-wise of all the brothers. So instead of being able to participate in judo, he spent a lot of his time watching, watching his brothers uh, practice judo. Throughout the years of watching, he developed an art form that was going to be uh, less physical on the body, but would allow him to use his smaller stature to dominate larger opponents. When Helio Gracie took judo and developed a, a ground fighting concept for smaller opponents, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was born. Later in the, in the early 90s now, Hoist Gracie, who was a grandson of Helio, commercialized the sport. Hoist Gracie competed in the first Ultimate Fighting Championships. During these competitions, Hoist Gracie dominated all competitors who came from many different forms of mixed martial arts, whether it be boxing, uh, judo, karate. Uh, Hoist was definitely the dominator. This was testament to the to the real uniqueness of ground fighting which was developed by Helio. So that gives, hopefully gives you a bit of background to the concept of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and where it started. Moving now to my experience, when I moved to New York, I read deeply in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It was something that gave me great interest. And I played physical sports throughout my life and I thought Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu would be the next, the next thing I would give a go to. From that, I joined Matt Serra's Mixed Martial Art Academy in Long Island, which was one of the one of the better academies there, which hosted many uh, world contenders even to, today. So I was on the gym floor, uh, ready to start practicing this art, which I really had no, no idea on besides the reading I had done. And as you can imagine, or may not imagine, but you'll imagine very shortly, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is something that when well, you get to know your partners really well. As can be shown by these photos, for example. I always thought to myself, as long as I didn't look my, component, my opponent or training partner in the eye, there was nothing wrong with it. So very rarely did we make eye contact. The training is some of the most arduous and intense exercise I've been through. It will push your stamina and your will, and especially wearing the heavy uniform that we wore during training. During Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training, you wear what is commonly known as a gi. And I brought this in today to show you. This is a thick gi which weighs a couple of pounds in itself, very tight material. And as can be shown on the shoulder here, is the lineage of the creation of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And we had the influence of the Japanese Mitsui Maeda, which then moved on to uh, Helio Gracie taking Judo and turning it into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And there, in America, is really where the art form spawned and became now to a point where there's hundreds of thousands of people competing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu worldwide. 
the respect and the mateship that we got from what I got from that sport was a real treasure. There is no sports I've experienced where you can be so quickly dominated by a smaller opponent, half my size. And being a tall guy, there was a lot of smaller opponents that really did dominate me pretty physically. But this instills a value in you. Well, it's definitely instilled a value in me of respect and to never underestimate anyone in the group. Through my journey, I fulfilled the white belt requirements of the Zoom Jiu Jitsu over the two and a half years of training there on Long Island. At various stages of progression, you would earn the white stripe. And just two weeks before I relocated back to Australia, I actually moved up to a blue belt, which was one of the greater achievements I've had so far in sport, and something I treasure pretty deeply. In conclusion, to generalise across the community, you know, mixed martial arts, I think, is a pretty bad name. I think names that have come to mind, unfortunately, might be barbaric, light sport, or even thug sport. As a practitioner of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I'm a huge advocate for the sport, I'm a huge advocate for the character that it builds in those that practice, and also for the health advantages that it brings. Next time you hear Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, whether on a TV, or a sign, an advertisement, or anything else where you may hear the words, I hope you recall today's speech, and you think of this great sport in a positive light. Mr. Toastmaster.